All right, morning guys. Uh, welcome to the first video, which is the first, we'll cover the first part um, of the project description, the objects and significance section. So remember that the project description is uh, the major section of your proposal. Um, it's gonna come after the title page, table of contents, um, and summary or abstract. So here's, uh, this is the assignment page, so title page, uh, table of contents, project summary. Uh, or abstract, uh, which we will be drafting this week, the project summary. Um, but now I want to talk to you about objects and significance. Uh, so the whole project description is five pages total. Um, its overall goal is to provide an accurate, detailed description of the problem you identify, the solutions, specifically the website you propose, uh, and the context for both. Uh, and you want to tell a story that persuades your audience that the problem is real and that the solutions are necessary and effective. So before moving into a discussion of the first two requirements of the description, uh, what kind of audience should you be aiming these proposals? Typical audiences for grants and proposals um, are going to be educated non-specialists. So according to this uh, NEH grant uh, writing tip sheet, uh, they suggest no jargon or insider language um, and advise against slang. Typically, your application is going to be read by quite a few people, and this is true if you're writing within uh, an industry situation or if you're writing as uh, a specialist to uh, NGO or government funding uh, body, that you're going to have to explain your project in terms that any well-educated person can understand. So for fellowship proposals, for grants, for uh, project proposals, uh, like we're thinking about eco-environmental ones, uh, the same style that you use for scholarly journals might be acceptable, but chances are you should anticipate a panel that only has one or two scholars, maybe only one person in your field, and that the remainder of the people on the panel are going to be uh, educated non-experts. So according to this tip sheet, uh, you might want to stand down from academic style and stay away from specific words or uh, presentations of fact uh, that will be off-putting. So uh, according to the tip sheet, some evaluators might find words such as uh, hegemony, uh, pretentious, and off-putting. So in the object and significance um, section, so this should be uh, one to two pages. Um, you're going to be explicit about your problem, its importance, and your overall approach and value. Remember that the proposal is a persuasive genre um, and in addition to anticipating your audience uh, via word choice and tone, you're going to want to craft a logical argument that's grounded in credible detail um, in order to make uh, your appeal, right? Um, so what are the important, um, what are the main challenges or goals of the topic or problem you identify and why are they important? Let's take a look at this sample uh, paragraph uh, from the case study that's in the Burnett chapter that we read. So uh, here, this case of nuclear waste disposal. Since the 1950s, nuclear power plants in the United States have produced more than 800,000 tons of radioactive waste, the most dangerous substance known to humans. The question of how to safely dispose of this waste, which remains toxic for hundreds of thousands of years, has proved daunting. All right, so it's going to open with this claim of verifiable evidence, right? So 80,000 tons uh, since 1950 uh, is info that is both verifiable and in the public domain. Um, and so the claim um, outlines the scope of the problem that the authors are going to address while drawing in readers, right? So the, the argument is, since nuclear waste threatens all human life, the readers of the proposal are human, so their lives are threatened by this problem, right? So how are you taking this uh, potentially esoteric problem and then reframing it uh, in terms that uh, demonstrate the stakes to the widest possible audience? Uh, how is the problem you identify both material and linguistic? All right, so this is like a second component. So remember that you're going to propose a website with a series of specific requirements as a solution to the problem you identify. To that end, uh, you might also want to identify in the objects and significance section of the pro proposal in what ways is the problem you identify one of communication in addition to material. Uh, so the second half of this first paragraph taken from the Burnett reading from last week 
uh, the authors of the uh, proposal identify not only material waste as a problem, but also poor risk communication, right? So they argue that from a public communication standpoint, the issues challenge uh, technical professionals to translate scientific information about health hazards into language that the average person can understand. Um, finally, and then this is still going in this project description section. Uh, what are the new ideas your team is proposing to address both material and the communication problems you detail in your project description? So how might you translate complex scientific information about, as like the example that we've been working with, nuclear waste disposal in Nevada through the following required elements uh, of an educational website? So how can your podcast, for example, uh, pull together uh, interviews by both experts and non-experts to tell the story of not only the problem with waste disposal, but also the problems around how it's been communicated, i.e. Uh, it the waste disposal issue is entrenched in like partisan politics in the state. Uh, how can you use uh, visual representation, so a fact sheet uh, detailing more sophisticated in this <clears throat> in the example about nuclear waste, maybe like chemical process, half-life uh, uh, type information, uh, and then use an infographic to translate that information to a non-expert audience. Uh, how can you use uh, flow charts, diagrams, maps uh, in the same way? So, I don't know, a specific topographical map uh, intended um, to provoke the interests of both the general public, um, but then also like the folks who are going to be approving this uh, project, and to then translate that into a specialized visual with extended captions for non-experts. And then finally, um, the articles in the glossary, how can you use these, uh, what, easily recognizable uh, genres uh, to further communicate to experts and non-experts the larger, again, uh, solutions to both the material and the communicative problems that you detail in your overall project. All right, so that covers um, sorry, the uh, objectives and significance section. Uh, in the next video, I am going to talk about um, background and need. So thanks so much.